Hello Believe Nation, today I'm going to talk about how I build connections and how you can too. Welcome everybody to another edition of Evan's Book, episode 64. The book is still in pre-release. We've got 99 sales right now. Guys, I really appreciate the support. We got to bump that number up a little bit. If every one of you watches this video by one book, I will have hit my goal of 3,000 pre-sales. So please guys, if you're buying one or 10 or 25 with different bonuses attached, I really appreciate that support. Let's get this thing going so we can do more work and, and help more entrepreneurs. So. Today I want to talk about though, how I increase my connections and how you can too, what you can learn from it. The founding theory, the core principle is making sure that you're adding value to the people who are in your current network, the people that you know. And I'm the guy who started with no network, right? I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have anybody that I could talk to. I went to my bank asking for help and advice, not just a loan. Like you need a loan? No, I'm, I need a mentor. I need help. I don't know what I need. So I, I'm starting from literally ground zero and, and how I've built up is really just understanding the people who are around you, what they need, what are they looking for, what's their big goal and how can you help contribute it to it. So as an example, this has all happened like in the past couple weeks, I had Lewis Howes on my show as an interview and he has a successful interview called The School of Greatness, he's a YouTube channel podcast and afterwards I connected with him and said, hey Lewis, who do you want to have on your channel? Like who's the dream candidates that you want to have on your channel? And he listed off five people or like Mike Tyson, The Rock, uh, Will Smith, a couple others. And I don't know any of those people, not yet. But one of the things that I'm now trying to do is connect with everybody who I know to say, hey, do you guys know any of these five people? Because I'm trying to help out a buddy of mine. And, and I may not be able to help him, but if I can, that's gonna mean the world to Lewis, right? These are the five people on his dream list that if I can help provide that for him, that's not like he's gonna owe me one, but he's gonna feel really good about me, right? He's gonna feel like I added a lot of value to him. And so the next time I'm trying to help somebody else out or trying to help myself out, Lewis is gonna to wanna to help me out because I helped him do some big thing that he wanted to do in his life and his business. And so it's taking that mentality and that approach to everybody around you. Here's another example. Uh, somebody on my team really loves Brene Brown. Brene Brown is a great speaker on vulnerability, has a great TED talk out, I think she's an author. I'm trying to help her get in contact with Brene Brown. I'm trying to do some kind of interview with Brene Brown where she might be able to join in on it, ask a question, something. Because this is, this is one of her heroes right now. And I'm a big fan of Brene, but for, honestly for all of these people, it doesn't really mean anything to me. People ask me, I remember going to New York City and Ryan Holiday asked me, hey, if I could help you get one person on your channel, who would it be? And the only name I could come up with was Kanye West because I think that'd be a fun interview. But other than that, I don't, I don't have anybody I wish I could meet. I don't have anybody I wish I could interview. So I guess that's a good thing, maybe. Uh, maybe it means I need to have other goals on that part. Sidetrack. So the person on my team really wants to connect with Brene Brown and nobody in my network knows Brene Brown. Nobody like friend of a friend knows Brene Brown, but there is a guy who's a YouTuber who has interviewed Brene Brown and I have an access to him. And so I'm gonna be meeting him. I already got an email introduction to him. And after we get off our interview, I'm hopefully can provide a lot of value to him and I could do something else to help him or where he wants to go and I'm gonna ask him, hey, who do you wanna have on your YouTube show and see if I can figure out a way to help him. And then ask him, hey, I'd love to be able to connect to Brene Brown to do an interview with her and then bring my person along. At the same time, that YouTuber that I'm gonna be interviewing, who knows Brene, is also somebody that my agent is trying to get in touch with and is trying to understand better what he's all about. And so I said, hey, can I, can I ask a question for you? I'm gonna be interviewing him. Is there something I can find out for you? And so I'm providing value to him. So I'm providing value to my agent. I'm providing value to the YouTuber. I'm providing value to Brene. Hopefully I'm providing value to um, the person on my team who really wants to meet her. And so just constantly thinking about the people in your network and understanding what they wanna accomplish, who they're trying to connect with, what they wanna do, and try to figure out, can you help them or not? You know, I look inside my salsa business, two of the people that I have on my team have spouses or significant others who want to be entrepreneurs or who are entrepreneurs. And so that's an easy way for me to help, right? Like I want to help not just the people on my team, but the people around them too, right? The, their spouses, their significant others, their parents, to the extent that I can. Like I can't help everybody with everything, but even if you just open up the awareness of understanding who the people on your team and the people around you are and thinking about what their goals are and asking them, what do you want to accomplish? 
trying to find ways to help them, you'll be surprised at how you can help influence uh, them getting what they want in a lot of different ways. And so, you know, for the people on my team, if, if their spouses and their significant others really feel appreciated towards me and what I'm doing, then it's, it makes everything easier. It makes their work-life balance easier. It makes it easier if somebody needs to go above and beyond to help out at the business because they feel that personal connection where a lot of times when you're working somewhere, you know, the husband or wife can see it as a negative because, you know, they may be away from work at, at doing some project. But when, if you can bring them in, it makes it a lot easier. And so just taking that approach consistently across everybody you meet, everybody you come in contact with to try to add value, to try to help them understand their goals and connect them with people that can help them get to the next step, that comes back a hundredfold. And so that's how I built my connections from, from having, from knowing zero, knowing nobody to be able to connect with some of the greatest thought leaders, especially in the entrepreneurial world that exist. And so I'm super blessed, but I'm not that smart. And it's something that you guys can do as well. Super easy to follow. You just have to take that mindset with all the people that you're talking to. Let's get to the book questions. First up is a cookies room TV. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you, Evan. You deserve it so much. You're changing the world. Thank you for that, it means a lot. I'm hesitating between buying now or going in a British bookstore and taking a selfie there. Haha, <laughs> so exciting, all the best. Feeling the love, really appreciate that. The difference uh, in terms of buying now is one, it really helps me with pre-orders from the bookstores. So that bookstore that you wanna go and take a selfie with, if they know that a lot of people from your area in Britain are buying it, they're gonna stock more books. Where if nobody's buying it, pre-orders from your area, then they might stock one book. So that selfie may not be amazing because there's only one book in the store instead of 10 or 20 or 30 or more. That really helps me. Uh, it also helps get the book on the bestseller list, which can help fuel and funnel the growth to even higher, higher heights, even higher heights. That works. If you really love the channel, then do both. You can always order right now up front and then you can pick up another one and do a selfie when it comes into the bookstore. Next up, Thomas Johnson. How does the book payment process work? So that's pretty simple. If you are ordering one book, then you can order it from any of the retailers that you're used to using it from. If you're Amazon or Barnes & Noble or wherever you normally buy a book, most of those places have an um, online ability to be able to order and you can find that, find my book there and just order however they accept payment. However Amazon accepts payment processing, that's how you can buy the book. If you're buying 10 or more, you get a discounted price and the more you buy, the bigger discount you get. And so that we've negotiated a rate with a company called CEO Reads. And so again, everything can be processed online. If you wanted to buy 10 books from Amazon, you could. It just, it would cost you more than if you use CEO Reads. So just giving you guys options. But whatever process Amazon typically accepts, that's how most of them do it. And you can uh, make payment through that way. Next up, Manjunath. Hey, I've been excited for your book. Will the book be available in India? means in Indian sites like Amazon.in, etc. So if the book is not, this is super important for all you guys watching, if the book is not available where you are right now, please let me know, leave it in the comments so I can give that to my publisher. I know a lot of you have been asking about India. Obviously it's not there yet, but if you keep leaving comments like this, I can keep pushing it to the publisher and say, hey, let's get some deals going with Amazon India so we can get it out. Next up, Jason, looking forward to your book. I want to print a copy. My family has a bit of a history in publishing. Inkwood Books in Tampa is a terrific independent bookstore. If you can get some copies, I know they'll sell. Best wishes. Looking forward to the launch. I appreciate that, Jason. I am not really handling too much of the retail side. Since I'm going through with a traditional publisher, they are doing most of the retail selling. The thing that I know that really helps, again, that I talked about before is if we get pre-orders from a certain geographic area, then it dramatically increases the chance that they're going to want to buy more and take up more. So if you want me to get into Inkwood Books in Tampa, then the more sales we have from Tampa, the publisher team can go to Inkwood and say, listen, look at all these sales we have from Tampa. You guys got to stock this book and the greater chances that they will. Next up is Janina. Can I pre-order your book in Amazon.ca? Yes, you can, Janina. It still counts. Any, any book sale counts if you want for the pre-orders and as well as the bonuses. Just make sure again that you email in the receipts. A lot of you guys have ordered but haven't emailed the receipts so we can't really keep track of it because we need to know the postal code or zip code. Uh, and you also get free bonuses and you might get a free shout out on a video. So make sure you email in the receipts whenever you buy. J Rise next. I'd love to see the audiobook version come to life. Not really sure why it's got a debut so late. Keep the pressure coming, guys. Keep the pressure for the audiobook coming. I send everything to the publisher. If you want it in an area, either 
again, a local area or you want it um, with the audiobook, let me know. I forward everything and it's gonna come out again with the audiobook. The feedback was typically they don't allow pre orders of audiobooks, but they're going to do it for mine, which is awesome. But I want it now. I don't wanna wait. I don't know when it's coming. So the more pressure I can give them, the faster we're gonna get it up. So keep it coming in the comments below. Next up, Lakeem. Thanks, Evan. Your work doesn't go unnoticed. These videos are part of my rigorous morning routine. So that really means a lot to me. I take great pride in that and also great responsibility in trying to create content for you guys that you'll enjoy. And I think it also is an important message for other entrepreneurs, for you guys watching, to create something that your customers, your audience would really cherish and really care about. You know, as an example, I look at people who write to me and say, how do I market my app? How do I market my app? Where do I, where do I take advertisements that are promoted? We're really, you just need to create something that people use. Like if people are, are loading up their phone or tablet and using your app on a daily basis, right? If they come back every day to your app, it's gonna spread because people will tell their friends and say, oh, what are you playing? Or what app are you using there? So if somebody's coming once a month to it, they may be not. So you have to really increase the quality of your production. So for you guys as entrepreneurs, whatever it is that you're making, make it something that somebody might put into their morning routine as part of their regular daily ritual to visit your website, to use your product, to buy whatever it is that you're selling. Something that they can use on a regular basis, the more you can tie into somebody's routine and make it that important that they would want to consume your stuff daily, if your stuff is that important, then it's gonna spread. Next up is Adam. Hi Evan, thank you for your assistance and backing. I'm getting information about the likelihood to make a review or summarized version of your book. I hope you good fortunes. Uh, hey Adam, a bunch of people have already reached out to me about uh, channels who are doing book reviews and, and I've got already people who have created some pretty good summaries on my channel. You can go check them out. I'm not really in the book review business, I'll do, I'll do some like highlightings of books as motivational videos. So I'm sure those will come out and I'm excited to see what people do with the content and how they mix it up and kind of DJ it to fit their needs and how people interpret what I've created into something. Um, but I am probably not going to do a summarized version myself. I'll pull out some like some specific chapters or specific pages and read them as videos and I have one coming out pretty soon but um, I'm probably not gonna do a summary edition of the book, but I'm sure that people will, and I'm excited to check those out. Next up is Janina who writes in, Hi, thank you for being so humble and smart. Oh yeah, we need a party for Believe Nation. I am in Toronto Dance Salsa HQ. I wanna see how cute Jason is. Jason's got a fan club. Jason's smiling over to the side. Jason's got a fan club happening here. Janina, Janina wants to see how cute you are, Jason. Next up, Antoine. Amazing, love your energy and enthusiasm, and I finally ordered my copy of your book. Much love, Antoine, really appreciate that. It's gonna be awesome, keep up the good work, and as mentioned by others, I'd love to see an interview with people working from behind the scenes, like your manager, literary agent, publisher, but also your videographer, Jason, bring them on. Wow, Jason's getting a lot of love. You guys are gonna do some serious arm twisting, because I've asked Jason to come on the camera I don't know how many times, and he's like, no, 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 no. So I don't, what do they have to do, Jason, to get you to come on camera? Lay down the challenge, what's the gauntlet? What, what do they have to do to get you on camera? He doesn't know, think about it. You have a week, think about it. <laughs> People love Jason. Next up, Tamara Weeks. Tamara bought 10 copies of the book, really love you for that, Tamara. We would very much like to see an interview with Steve, Nina, and Miriam. We want Jason, we want Jason. Wow, the love is coming in strong for Jason. People really want Jason. Next up, Tonica. Yes, we would love to see Jason on the video. Thanks, Evan. It's been fun getting a look behind the scenes of getting your book out. I'll be reserving my copy for sure. Really appreciate that, Tonica. And uh, yes, any arm twisting that we can add on Jason was amazing to, uh, let, let's get him in. I think, I think he would do really well. I think he would do really well. We've got to figure out a way to make that happen. Next up is Nana. Evan, watching this video made watching your videos look more real. At least we get to know you better. Perhaps a video where you get to share some of your secrets leading up to this point and about your book publishing and videos will be quite helpful. I mean, I've been doing this video series for over 60 weeks and I've been trying to share the behind the scenes every week. Every week I've been sharing what I've been going through, how I've been writing the book, traditionally now how I'm marketing the book as well as answering your questions. So I'd encourage you to go back on the channel and look through, you've got, you got 60 plus weeks of content of all kind of behind the scenes of what it takes to create a book that goes with a major publisher. Next up, Herbert Einstein. 
Hey yo, greetings from Germany. We want the book. Let me pre-order on Amazon, please. I love it, another market. I know some people have ordered from Germany, but I guess they're ordering from Amazon.com. So yeah, again, if, there's a, if you're from a country where you can't find it on your local Amazon, link that up and I'm gonna tell the publisher so uh, we can apply some pressure. Next up, Eternal Incantation. How many entrepreneurs, businessmen, successful people did you study in your book? Evan, you should mention about the content table of the books a bit. When I see the t-shirt you're wearing and how the cover name of the book is, I don't think it's worth ordering. Listen, I appreciate the honest feedback. I'm also not in the business of trying to convince anybody of anything. Like if you don't like the vibe I'm putting off, then you're probably not gonna like the book too, right? If you don't like the messaging, if you don't like the t-shirt that, that I was wearing with the different words on it, people love that t-shirt. Um, but if you don't like it, that's cool. Uh, we might put a table of contents up. It might add some, some clarity to it, but if you're making your decision to buy the book based on the table of contents and how many people I've interviewed in the book, it probably won't be a good fit for you. And that's cool. I, I don't wanna try to convince you to do something that you don't wanna do. Next up, Catherine. Yes, the bonuses are awesome. I've already printed out some of the motivational posters and I'm really enjoying the rest. Awesome, Catherine, thank you for uh, that feedback. The bonuses, this is I guess a good part about being able to order now. I get that the book is still far away, December is coming out, but you get to be able to get the bonuses almost immediately. We say within one week, usually it's about 24 hours before you get the bonuses coming to you. Uh, and that you can apply to your business immediately, whether you're buying one, 10, 25 books, there's a lot of different bonus options for you to get. Uh, while you wait for the book to come out in December. So I'm glad that you're, you're feeling the bonuses, Catherine, and I really appreciate that comment. Next up, Kevin Palomo. Jason in the video. We're trying, Kevin, we're trying. He's right next to me, and every time I see Jason, I'm calling him out, and he's smiling, but we still need to figure out what he needs, what he needs to get on camera. We're working on it. And last up is Baron. I appreciate the realness. I feel like most people would hide or lie about the number of books they've sold. I think most people do. I think there's a lot of secrecy about how the whole book industry works. That's, you know, when I was trying to research it and find out myself, there wasn't a lot of content on, on how to go through the process. So I thought I would document it for anybody else who wanted to become an author with a major publisher and what the steps were and what the frustrations were and the ups and downs. And so I tried to be real throughout the whole process. And, you know, sometimes that hurts, uh, but hopefully net net it's a win for everybody involved. And so, yeah, I try to update you guys with the numbers. The goal is to hit 3000 books on the pre-orders. Right now we're at 99. You know, that's not anywhere close to where I wanna be. Hopefully we can hit that goal with you guys and your support. Come on, Believe Nation, let's get 3000 books. But yeah, I mean, the whole point of the series is to be as open and honest as possible with you and answer questions about the, about the process that uh, not everybody's super happy about, but, um, I feel it's right, so I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna call it a wrap there. Guys, I really appreciate the support, appreciate all the love. I'd love to know what you think about the opening topic about building connections and how I do it and how you might be able to learn from that or how you build connections in your business. And if you have any comments, questions about my book, the book writing process, you just wanna make sure that Jason gets on the next video, drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to reply next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Continue to believe, or whatever your one word is, and we will. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Bye.